I'm at a gypsy. Like the youth in the or like coming up in the game is that like you like you can be a professional motocross racer based on how hard you work. Yeah, hundred percent. So with that amateur thing, and like I feel that about anything, but I feel like that was about anything. But like you said earlier, like I could never play NBA or yeah. or NFL. Like, hey, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get wrecked if I do get the ball ever and then same with basketball i'm just gonna get swatted right away so it's like i mean what's the point you know but i get it like i, I do believe in that mentality but yeah there's certain like i said height requirements not gonna meet <laughs> um so while we're kind of touched on that the amateur thing um you weren't you weren't at loretta's this year no yeah but you've you've been there quite a bit obviously stars got like a pretty gnarly yeah amateur program What's your thoughts on the direction of amateurs and the way that it's kind of gone in the last few years? Because especially coming off list, like we just did the Cody Shock podcast and that kid did not have the amateur career that a standard uh, kid would have and he's running top 10 in the 450 class outdoors right now. And it's like I listened to that story with him and it's like it came without all of these pressures without any of the money without any of the um this kind of more quote unquote like standard route and man like it was just so cool listening to him talk about the way that he brought up and i thought about you know you add in like all the money and the pressure and the prestige and the the way that a lot of these kind of like top kids are, are fed out of that system and I'm just like, man, I feel like these kids aren't learning the same lessons in life that, that Cody did. So, I mean, based on your assessment of like Guayco and Star, who obviously have like crazy amateur programs, like what do you think about that whole deal these days? Are we doing the right thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're doing what we have to. You know, I think that that's at the end of the day, I think you, you kind of have to have a horse in the race. And I think all the teams are kind of to blame if you want to blame someone for what's going on. But if one pulls out, the other one will step up. So it's mm -hmm. it's one of those things where you, you kind of have to. Right. But with that said, yeah, I think you lose some of the figure it out on your own type of stuff. And how bad do you want it on your own? Because, I mean, really, they don't have to do much on their own. You know, the, the trainers there the bikes there, the mechanics there. I mean, things are pretty much figured out for you. I mean, and the one advice I could just have to go back, I, to, if I have a regret in my career, it was those last two years of the A class at Loretta is like not enjoying one second because of the pressure that I had to do. I had to win or I wasn't going to make it as a pro. Like how I was taught was, you know, it wasn't from my parents or anything, but you hear everything at the races. If you don't win Loretta's, they're not going to give you a ride. Why would they? You can't handle the pressure here. You're never going to hack it at the top level. And I never did it. And I remember leaving there my last year so bummed, like, I mean, yeah, I know I had I had a ride, but I just felt like I had basically failed. You know, I've already failed before I even went pro, and it was like, you know, I didn't enjoy those last two years with my parents before it turned into a legitimate job, um, where I should have just, these are the last moments I'm going to have with these guys, you know, as a family. Yeah, they're going to come to my races, and I get that, but it's, you know, it's different than once you go pro. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do think that there's some of those things I need to find out on their own and not have you know everything catered at all times you know i think that that is something that's missing and you know i watch cody ride out here all the time and i love watching him i feel like that guy works harder than most of the guys that he's racing you know i see him one of the first ones at paul and the last ones to leave that doesn't go unnoticed like and he has a sick style rides good and he's doing awesome on a privateer bike like how how do you not root for a guy like that yeah and i think that there's like i mean the th you you're so right like the caveat to this conversation like everything from here is just uh like fucking contention you know what i mean but the caveat for the conversation is like what do you what else are you gonna do are you gonna be star racing and not get the best amateur kid are you gonna be a geico and not get like okay they have to yeah. do that so you are right but it's like i think we're missing something and you know there's a the sport will go a direction, right? And it's like, there's got to be, you know, it's like the constitution's underwritten by freedom, you know? So it's like, at what point do we have to make a decision with like these kids and say like, okay, all these decisions have to be underwritten with like these values in place. And these values can't be stepped over uh, for the, 
reward of winning a title at the end. It's like these are kids that um, that we need to turn into really good people. And I mean, it was one of the things where, when I had Brian Deegan on the podcast, like we were talking about, you know, like what would you do? And I was like, man, make a fucking badass human. Don't make the most badass dirt bike rider. Make the most badass human that you can because all the people that I know that are fucking gnarly successful people are the dopest humans like they have got so much figured out internally there's so much control over the self in the way that you kind of spoke about like you can quiet the voices you can put in the work you can you know all of these things come from like the work that you do a base level being a person so i mean obviously yeah there's a element to this where it's like star racing has to get the best guys geico you know ktm there has to be that but it's like ah, uh, is there like a win at all cost mentality and is it hurting these guys like are there guys that you've seen that have come out of this program that like they got kind of fucked by it in a way i mean i think you see that i think you see that yearly and that's just some of the guys that they either needed another year a or one more year pro to figure it out and they probably are going to do what you want but you know it's a business at the end of the day and it sucks and I, I don't like it and I was a product of it I got thrown to the wolves too and then wasn't good enough and then you're searching like I said walking around and asking for a ride and that's just reality um and does it make it okay no not really I, I think I think the biggest thing is it's like anything at that age you want it now and like I gotta go now I gotta go now well once you go there's no going back like be ready for that jump and you might be jet you might be 16 when it's time you might be myself or you know Levi Kitchen you might be 20 years old there's no wrong anymore it used to be you had to be 16 or your career shit it doesn't matter look at Justin Cooper I think he was 19 or 20 when he went pro and mm. look how awesome he is as a rider he's very put together he's extremely mature he's extremely consistent has been since the day he went pro but that's a lot of its maturity bodies you know fully developed all that stuff I mean yeah a lot of these kids come out at 16 look at Adam he was 16 and he was winning every supercross but as soon as he crashed his shoulders you know done but you're not developed you're going through puberty you're trying to figure out who i am as a man even and just starting to use deodorant it's like you know what i mean like some of this stuff i feel like you can almost rewind a little bit but that's natural as a human like we we're just talking about the bills like if i don't pay it right when it comes in the mailbox i failed well it's the same thing if i don't go pro right when everyone expects me to have i failed no you haven't and every pass gonna be different yeah I would have liked to have gone pro at 16 and been jet hell yeah I would have loved to have been that guy but was there's no shot in hell that I was ready for it like if I would have went pro at 16 I would have been done in one year and been tossed back like no go to work because you're not gonna hack it and that's reality and that's okay but everyone like I said everyone matures at a different level and a lot of that speaks from him going to Europe experiencing that culture he's basically you know 16 or 17 year old but he's actually 25 his experience yeah. levels of a 25 year old over here because he's seen so much he's eaten so much different food had to be accustomed to different time zones at such a young age you've experienced that like i grew more as a person when i started traveling the country or mm -hmm. you know not just the country you know the, the world like as soon as i started getting out of my comfort you know eating different food and meeting new people and being around and being honestly uncomfortable not being able to read signs having to figure it out like that's when i grew and that's when I mm. felt like this is cool, but look, he's done that. At, he's done that at 14 years old. You know, he's he's so experienced. Like I think a, a lot of that. It's not just one certain thing. Obviously, his dad's great and a great aspect. He's guided these guys, so no doubt his program's correct. But I'm just saying, like he's done a lot of things that have added him up to being literally a 25 year old in a 17 year old's body. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.